I watched USC yesterday. Better question, did you watch USC yesterday? And if you watched USC, did you do it illegally? You don't have to admit it. Just nod your head, yes or no. I'm not sure what you saw. Sure, you saw USC beat San Jose State 56-28, to but judging by my Twitter feed and certainly judging by my DMs and maybe even some of the text I got from my non-Trojan-aligned friends on the iJosh, I don't think you saw what I saw. I get the feeling you saw USC get torched. I get the feeling you saw San Jose State put up over seven yards per carry. Certainly, these are mathematic facts. But I, I looked at this, and I remembered what I tried to preach to you guys when we were talking about the Pac-12. Remember how to interpret USC's schedule. So Lincoln Riley's not stupid. He knows that they are not going to face a single team they don't overwhelm until week seven. And that includes, God bless them, San Jose State. Pretty good quarterback on that team, but still completely overmatched. So I watched it, and I saw 22 different guys get in the defensive scoring sheet. I saw people rotating all throughout the game. And I looked at it and said, does this not feel like a scrimmage? Does this not feel like their second fall scrimmage? Does this not look like the spring game a little bit? And our guys over at uscfootball.com kind of said the same thing in their postgame wrap. Um... I think they just had a plan for how they wanted to manage the game. It wasn't going to be statistically friendly. And certainly if they found themselves in an unexpected dogfight, maybe they handle it differently. But that was never going to happen here. So USC ran it up on them. I think what most people took away is we're watching a third and 22 play if you're watching on YouTube. And it looks terrible. It's just it's playground quality defense. That's what it was. It's, in other words, very reminiscent of what we saw from USC last year. As Meemaw once famously said, USC could not slow down molasses in December. To me, I think they're much better defensively this year. But when I say they are, I'm speaking very much in the future tense, or I didn't, but I should have spoken in the future tense. I don't think what you saw yesterday is nearly the rotational plan they'll have. I don't think it's the depth chart plan they have. I think they'll settle on guys. Certainly they want to develop and be able to rotate more waves in there. They didn't have that last year. They still won't have it this year. They're not going to be very good defensively. I just need them to be kind of good. If they could, if, if Alex Grinch could get this defense to like just below average, given what they have offensively, that's good enough to compete in every game. That's good enough to win every game, theoretically. But you got to apply the proper filters to this team. Remember, their schedule. Colin, uh, go in your Easy Bake Oven and pull out the first half of their schedule. There it is. Check this out. Have you ever seen a pan of cupcakes like this? San Jose State. Next up, we got Nevada, then Stanford, then bye week. Bye is actually a better team than two or three of these folks that they play early on. They go to Arizona State. They go to Colorado. They got Arizona. Then it starts. Then we start finding stuff out. They go to Notre Dame. They got Utah. They got Washington at Oregon and UCLA to close out the year. I skipped over Cal because I think Cal's garbage this year. So it's very backloaded. They will not face a team they don't completely and totally drown talent-wise until that Notre Dame game. And that is, it's kind of close to Halloween. Some people will long since have had their Halloween decorations out by that point. I don't necessarily get down with that, but some people do, and that's their right. Zachariah Branch is a freak. We talked about him about three weeks ago when we were talking about impact players, and I remember it because we pointed him out. It's true freshman, five-star true freshman receiver for USC. We pointed him out, and some people came back and said, Yeah, that kid's good, but USC is pretty loaded at receiver. I know they are. They don't have players like him, though. Bet you they don't have players like him. That's what I said. And they don't. don't. He doesn't even have his mouthpiece in, guys. Imagine how good he'll be when he puts his mouthpiece in. I'm not going to do what some of you recklessly did yesterday and say, oh, he looks like Reggie Bush. But he looks like very few players who have come through that program. So let me just put it that way. It's always just fascinating with these loaded teams or in USC's case loaded receiver rooms when a truly elite talent comes in from high school he had four receptions for 58 yards and a touchdown he returned a kickoff yesterday he did all kinds of things with punt returns when an elite talent comes in to a position room it doesn't matter how loaded the position room is when a truly elite talent comes in you can't keep them off the field Zachariah Branch was never going to get kept off the field unless he got in trouble disciplinary-wise. And to hear the folks around USC tell it, 
he has no clue how good he even is. So he's kind of one of those happy-go-lucky, do his work, then just kind of put football on the back burner sort of guy. So I don't, he sounds like he's going to be really good out there. He looks like he's going to be really good. Let's just look. Let's take USC and their performance for what it was yesterday. They pulled away from a team. They were never going to be challenged by them. I think they knew it, and I think they handled the game accordingly.